Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on open fractures. Open fractures are a common presentation to accident and emergency departments and require urgent assessment and management by the orthopedic team. If left untreated, open fractures are associated with high rates of morbidity and mortality. A fracture is open when there is a direct communication between the fracture site and the external environment. This is most often through the skin. However, pelvic fractures may be internally open, having penetrated into the vagina or rectum. Fracture may become open by either an in out injury, whereby the sharp bone ends penetrate the skin from beneath, or an out in injury, whereby a high-energy injury penetrates the skin, traumatizing the subtending soft tissues and bone. Whilst any fracture can become open, the most common fractures are tibial, phalangeal, forearm, ankle, and metacarpal. Open fractures can be associated with skin and soft tissue loss, neurovascular injury, and infection. Patients will present with pain, swelling, and deformity, with an overlying wound or punctum. In severe cases, the bone end may be visible protruding from the wound. On examination, check neurovascular status and overlying skin for any skin or tissue loss. Any evidence of contamination should be assessed for and documented. The gastillo anderson classification can be used to classify open fractures. Type 1, less than 1 cm wound, and clean. Type 2, 1 to 10 cm wound, and clean. Type 3 can be divided into A, B, and C. Type 3A, more than 10 cm wound, and high energy, but with adequate soft tissue coverage. Type 3B, more than 10 cm wound and high energy but with inadequate soft tissue coverage, and type 3C, all injuries with vascular injury. A simple summary and how this can help to guide management is, 3A can be managed by orthopedics alone, 3B requires plastics input, and 3C requires vascular input. For investigation, all patients with suspected open fractures require basic blood tests, including a clotting screen, and a group and save. A plain film radiograph of the affected area will be required as well. This is a plain radiograph of an open Galeazzi fracture. For management of open fractures, following suitable resuscitation and stabilization, urgent realignment and splinting of the limb is warranted. Ensure to reassess and document the neurovascular status following any realignment or reduction. Broad-spectrum antibiotic cover should be administered, as per local guidelines, and a tetanus vaccination is required if the patient is not fully up to date with their vaccination. Photograph the wound and remove any gross debris. The wound should then be dressed with a saline soak gauze. Ensure to photograph any open fracture to avoid repeated uncovering of dressings for inspection. Definitive surgical management requires debridement of the wound and the fracture site, removing all devitalized tissue present. This should happen immediately if contaminated with marine, agricultural, or sewage material, and done within 12 to 24 hours in all other cases. Ensure the wound is washed out with copious volumes of saline. Ensure definitive skeletal stabilization. If soft tissue coverage is required, this should happen within 72 hours, or is guided by plastic surgeon advice. If there is vascular compromise, this needs immediate surgical exploration by vascular surgery. To summarize this video, here are some key points. Open fractures are associated with high rates of morbidity and mortality. The most common fractures that are open are tibial, phalangeal, forearm, ankle, and metacarpal. Check the overlying area for skin breakdown or tissue loss. All patients with open fractures need antibiotic cover and up-to-date tetanus vaccination. Timely surgical management, with input from plastic and vascular surgery is required, will ensure optimal outcomes. That's all for this video. Thank you.